Welcome to the worship service of the Cashmere Gardens Church of Christ, 4315 Lippenwell Street, Houston, Texas, ministered by Brother Winfred Frazier. It is our pleasure to have you with us on today. Together we will sing praises to God, lift up prayers, read from the Word of God, hear a gospel sermon, have an opportunity to give back to God, and observe the Lord's Supper. Let's now enter into worship. Now, Brother Taylor read in our hearing verses 21 and 22. And uh, I'm going to reread uh, verse 21 and then share the subject under which we will study. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times? The subject under which we will study on today is entitled Enabled to Forgive. Enabled to Forgive. In Matthew chapter 18, Jesus, see Jesus, verse number 22, Jesus said to him, we see Jesus, Jesus is God's son, Amen. and he is our savior. Jesus is the master teacher and the miracle worker. Jesus is our cross-carrying, crucified Lord. Jesus, the only one who has ever created life, lived the life he created, died by the hands of his creation, rose from death, intercedes for those who are saved from condemnation by him, and who will judge the world in righteousness. This Jesus in Matthew Chapter 18 and verse 21 is ask of Peter a question regarding forgiveness. Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times? So Peter asked Jesus this question. Now, G Peter uses a word in this question and we pronounce this word as forgive. It comes from the Greek word, and I'm going to spell it, then I'm going to try to pronounce it as A-P-H-I-E-M-I. -E and uh, it is said to be pronounced as a fee a fee something, something to learn. Uh, you might want to write that down and just practice saying it because it's going to help you to know this word. A fear of me is defined as to set aside. And the question becomes, what is to be set aside? He says, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? I set something aside. What is to be set aside? Jesus tells a parable to illustrate what God does when he forgives. And I want to preposition you to let you know that God sets something aside when he forgives. And when we forgive, we are to set something aside. Listen to Jesus teach in Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse number 23. The Bible says, Jesus teaching, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10 
thousand talents. Now, observe the amount that this servant owed the king. A talent is said to be equivalent to 15 years wages. So if you can visualize this, just take your annual salary and uh, uh, multiply your annual salary by 15. And whatever that number is, that's what a talent is. 15 years of one's annual salary. The servant owed an outrageous amount of money to his master. Now, now when you take the 15 years of his salary, and look at the text. See, 15 years is one talent. But the text says he owed him 10,000 talents. So you take 15 years of your wages and multiply that total of 15 years by 10 thousand who borrows that kind of money are y'all with me no one borrows 150,000 years of their annual pay but watch Jesus is teaching verse 25 but for as much as he had not to pay his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. I'm gonna pay him a 150,000 years worth of pay. I'm going to pay it all. Then the Lord of, the, of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Now, keep in mind that the word forgave is in past tense and forgive is in present tense. Now, when you look at the original language, you'll see that Jesus is using the same word that Peter uses. Are y'all with me? And that, that, that's, a, that's an assumption uh, that we make. But the reality is that Jesus is on the subject that Peter asked him. Now look at the size of the debt. When you look at the size of the debt, Everybody who hears this expects to hear that this man is going to be thrown into prison or worse. And that starts to happen to him until he asks for mercy. He says, but verse 25, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him. Now, the Lord is going to give him punishment for not being able to what? Pay. To pay. Commanded him to be sold, his wife, his children, and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell. This was going to happen until the servant fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. When the servant asks for mercy, the king sets aside his anger. The king sets aside the punishment 
that he has obligated himself to give to his servant. The king sets that aside. When the text says he forgave him, he set aside the punishment. He set aside the anger. He set aside the mindset and the action that went along with or that was compatible to not paying. And not only does he grant his request, instead of giving him time to pay the debt back, you know, he said, okay, I'm gonna have mercy on you. I'm gonna give you some time. No, he didn't say, I'm gonna give you some time. 150,000 years of pay he could never do. So the king cancels the debt. He sets the debt aside. He sets the anger aside. He sets the punishment aside. He sets the debt aside. Now notice that the king is willing to forgive an inconceivably large debt. And now don't let this fly over your head now because you know, we're, we're reading about Jesus' teaching, but when it comes down to business matters and matters among each other, you know, the question becomes, do we embrace, do we own, do we practice God's concept of forgiveness? Amen. Is Jesus teaching Peter that God's forgiveness is greater than man's forgiveness? Is Jesus teaching Peter that God's forgiveness is not limited by the traditions and expectations of people? Peter says, uh, how many times shall my uh, brother sin against me and I forgive him until seven times? Well, where did that come from? That came uh, from, and you can also look back in Genesis 4 and verse 24 and see uh, uh, 70 times uh, there with Lamech. But what that comes from is uh, that the Jews had the idea that uh, if you uh, forgave a person three times, then uh, you were done forgiving. Are y'all with me? But, but Peter says, since I'm talking to Jesus, I'm going to go a little further than what the Jews normally practice i'm gonna double it up to seven times jesus so is, is god uh, is god's forgiveness uh limited to the traditions and expectations of people don't let that slide over your head because when we were coming up brother taylor if somebody did you wrong then you had a host of people on the side of you and behind you and in front of you talking about what you gonna do man what you gonna do are y'all with me? A lot of fights went on behind that very question, what you gonna do? And we didn't want to look bad in front of our friends and constituents and family. So we felt compelled to do something. If you didn't do something and you was a young man or a boy or a man, you know what they would call it. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? And girls, you know, uh, girls had their moments too. So, so, so God's forgiveness, is it limited uh, by the expectations and traditions of people? Is Jesus teaching Peter that God's forgiveness is not, it, it not only stretches beyond the number of times man will forgive, it stretches beyond the matters for which man will forgive. You see, Jesus took Peter to another level. Peter says, sin against me. Shall I forgive him up to seven times? Peter is talking about times. Jesus took it a step further. He says, what about a matter? What about a matter that's extenuating? What about somebody owing some money that they cannot pay? 
Is it possible to forgive someone, not just so many times, but in a manner that's inconceivable? Listen to, listen to the Lord, Psalms 103 and verse 12. This is what the Lord said in the Psalms. He says, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. What is the Lord teaching us? The Lord knows how to lay, let something be laid aside. He knows how to move it out of reach. He knows how to move it out of sight. He knows how to make it disappear. You remember when we used to pray, Lord, forgive us of our sins and throw them into the sea of forgetfulness. That's just an illustration of how we understand that God can lay aside. He can lay things aside. Isaiah 38 and verse 17 uh, the Lord says through Isaiah, Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. You remember, you remember when you did something uh, that you were not supposed to do. And your parents found out about it. Have you ever heard your parents say, get out of my sight. Get out of my sight. Don't want to look at you. Are y'all with me? In this text, he says, you have uh, taken my corruption. You have taken all of my sins. Not some of my sins, but all of my sins. And you have put them behind Die back. In other words, God, you have put my sins behind you. You ever heard uh, someone say, well, what's done is done. Let it go. You know, yesterday that happened. Today is a new day. In other words, somebody is saying, you need to put it aside. You need to lay it aside. You are not to allow that to stop uh, us from going forward. God's forgiveness is unlimited. It's unlimited by man's expectations. God's forgiveness is unlimited by the number of times man sins. And God's forgiveness is unlimited by the magnitude of man's sins. Now, I want you to know something, uh, that this lesson is not giving anybody a license to sin just so a God can forgive. That was the question in Romans chapter 6. And verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? I won't know God unless I do something I shouldn't do in order to experience his grace, his mercy, and his forgiveness. That's not the teaching there. I want you to stay with it because we have not gotten to the subject yet. When we get to it, you'll see it. Now, when you continue to read the parable, the servant that's forgiven is not willing to forgive a relatively small debt. Verse 28, the Bible says, But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Now observe that a pinch, uh, also uh, translated a denarius, is one day's wage. One day. He owed the king 150,000 years of wages. He gets forgiven. He then goes to a servant who owes him one day's wage. Are y'all with me? You would think that after experiencing 
being forgiven of a debt he could never pay. You would think after being forgiven and experiencing the relief of never having to repay the debt he could never pay. Are y'all with me? Now, 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 I don't know if you uh, uh, understand this, but sometimes in credit, you can get an extension. Are y'all with me? Uh, so you run into some uh, financial difficulty. You call your creditor and say, I would like to have a extension. Some uh, creditors will give you uh, a one month, two months, or three month uh, extension in the course of your loan period. Are y'all with me? So if you get a one month, two month, or three month extension, that means for three months, you do not have to pay that note. So if it's March now, and you are in extension uh, a phase, for March, uh, April, and May, you don't have to pay that note. But when June comes, guess what? It's time to crank it up again. And uh, if y'all, you know, live in the same world I live in, it seems like those three months go very fast. <laughs> it goes very fast. So, so, so now this forgiven servant, he's not in no extension, period. He doesn't ever have to worry about paying again. You would think that after experiencing the joy of knowing my family, do you understand what's, what was about to happen to him? His family was about to experience generational suffering. His family did not borrow that money. He borrowed the money. But now his family is going to have to suffer because of what he did. When he's gone, it's possible that that family would still be under servitude. The baby is born into that family, are born into servitude, all because of what he did. Are y'all with me? But understand, now that my family is not going to have to suffer behind what I have done. Can you imagine the joy? Can you, you would think that after experiencing the freedom to walk around town. Man, now you know, uh, when you live in a community, you know, people know about your stuff. Are y'all with me? Amen. You know, in, uh, in, in the business world, you know, you know, folk know about you too. You file bankruptcy. Yeah. You can say shh all you want to. There ain't no shush in filing bankruptcy. They pull your social security a number up. Bam! Bankruptcy! Yeah, you think you, since you don't have to pay those bills anymore, you think that you're just going to go and start buying stuff? Man, you're going to meet that bankruptcy. Yeah. Some folk are not going to fool with you. Because of bankruptcy. And if you buy something on credit, you're going to pay a whole lot more than you would pay if you wasn't on bankruptcy. Are y'all with me? But this man, he's not bankrupt. Yeah, he's, he's not bankrupt. Can you understand that? See, see bankruptcy will say uh, that you don't have to pay. But you got this stigma that you don't pay. And that's why individuals uh, won't fool with you because your credit history says you won't pay. We loaned you some money, but you won't pay. Are you, that's what your credit score, that's what it boils down to. Boils down to that you won't pay. Will you pay or will you pay? It's, uh, if you got 800 credit score, then the credit says, they're most, more, more than likely they're gonna pay. You got a 300 credit score, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna pay. He ain't just a fool with him because he ain't gonna pay. Are y'all with me? And, uh, and if you do get some credit, it's because somebody's your friend. 
It have nothing to do with your ability to pay. Your your friend, uh, your friend, will have you wherever you uh, do transaction business. Now listen, don't you embarrass me. So your friend already know that you got a pitch, uh, you got a uh, history of not paying. Are y'all with me? But 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 listen, he doesn't have any of that. He doesn't have any. It's clean. It's clean. See? It's clean. Do y'all understand that? It's, it, he doesn't have any of that. All of that has been set aside. And you would think after experiencing all of that, that servant would have gladly forgiven the servant that owed him literally a fraction of what he owed the king. But he didn't. He didn't. And that's what got me, Brother Taylor, about this text. Out of all the good stuff the king did for him, it didn't help him. It didn't change him. Listen, here's a, here's a, sobering, here's a sobering thought. Just because I've learned my way to the church, I want to see everybody at church. I want to be at church every Sunday. But here's the sobering reality. Just because I know my way to the church does not guarantee that I have changed. This man experienced a debt laid aside that he could never pay back. And that did not change him. I don't know if you ever seen some. I don't know if you ever seen. Don't, don't, li listen, don't allow the devil to make you think that this is just in the Bible. It's not. You ever heard of a repeat offender? Somebody that has been incarcerated for a number of years. They come out of incarceration and they say, okay, I have to live a changed life. And nothing changes. You ever seen uh, someone relapse on an addiction? I have gotten clean. And now I'm supposed to live a changed life. But the change doesn't occur. What about us becoming Christians? What about us being baptized into Jesus Christ? Are we supposed to change? Was this servant? supposed to have been changed as a result. Can you see what Jesus is teaching? Peter wants to know how many times shall I forgive my brother? Up to seven times. Man, that's a deep question. That's a deep question. So, so what we're going to, we're going to look at today is what enables a person to forgive. See, something didn't happen to this servant. Even though the king laid aside the anger, he laid aside the punishment, he laid aside the debt, this forgiven servant did not change. So what enables us? Is there anything in this text that teaches us what enables us to forgive? I have three. I have three. And I'm going to see how many I can give you this morning. Here's the first one. Forgiveness connects a person to God. Forgiveness connects a person to God. You see, it was impossible for the unforgiving servant to function as an accepted servant while the king wanted him to pay. 
See, see, that's why the king brought him. Because he wasn't acceptable. Are y'all with me? It was impossible for him to be accepted. While the king wanted him to pay, yet he was unable to pay his debt. It's, you know, our old brother, our old brother Taylor, uh, $10,000. And I was supposed to pay him last month the $10,000. Now I'm standing up here talking about this parable. What do you think is going on in Brother Taylor's mind? Huh? What do you think is going on in his mind? He talking about this. Uh, he ain't paid me. Are y'all with me? Yeah. It's, it's, it's. And then when, I, when church is out, Brother Taylor is going to speak to everybody. Are y'all with me? Yeah, he's going to speak to everybody. I could be 10, about five feet away from him. And he's going to speak to everybody. And then, then when there's nobody else to speak to, if I'm close, then he's going to speak. Now, if I done going out that door, Brother Taylor's going to go out that door. Are y'all with me? Oh, that happens. That happens. That happens. Because I'm not acceptable. And my sermon could be biblically, biblically correct. It could be non-abrasive, non-offensive. Nothing wrong with the sermon. But I'm not acceptable. Because I have not been able to pay the debt. So now in order for Brother Taylor to Except me, either I'm going to have to be able to pay the debt or he's going to be able to forgive me. Are y'all with me? That's the only, that's the only way. The servant could not pay the debt. Therefore, their connection, their reconciliation had to occur through the king's forgiveness. It's not until I have a conversation with Brother Taylor and said, Brother Taylor, uh, I, have, I, I have not paid you, uh, and, I, and I make some type of arrangements that's acceptable to him, that I'm going to be acceptable to him. Other than that, yeah, he knows me. Now listen, he knows me, but he don't own me. He don't own me as a brother. He'll call me Brother Fraser, but he don't own me as a brother. Don't let that fly over your head. You can call a sister a sister, but that doesn't mean you own them as a sister. Are y'all with me? That don't mean you own them as a sister. You can call me Brother Fraser, but that don't mean you own me as Brother Fraser. Are y'all with me? So, so something has to happen in order for there to be a connection. It's impossible to have a father-child relationship with God without forgiveness. Amen. It's impossible, but don't even try to think that God favors you without him forgiving you. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Romans chapter 5 and, and verse uh, number uh, 6, uh, he says, when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died see we were without strength without strength to do what without strength to forgive our own sin Romans chapter 2 and verse 5 the Bible says because of the hardness and impenitent heart you treasure up wrath why are you treasuring up wrath because you cannot forgive your own sin are y'all with me? All, all I do is get further and further. The barrier between me and God becomes bigger and bigger. Day after day, I can't remove it myself. I can't turn back the hands of time. You remember that song, if I could turn back the, even if you could turn back the hands of time, you can't undo what you did yesterday. That barrier of sin becomes bigger 
and bigger. Isaiah 59 and verse 1 and 2. Uh, the Lord says to Isaiah, The Lord's hand is not short that it cannot see. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Barrier of sin between us and God. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, now in verse number 10 of that uh, Romans chapter uh, 5, he says, For if when we were enemies of God, we were reconciled to God by what? The death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we should be saved by his life. Isn't that something? It is impossible to have a father-child relationship with God without forgiveness. And you cannot have the forgiveness of God, forgiveness of God without Jesus Christ. The Bible says that in Christ we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Jesus is the propitiation. He's the only propitiation. Not for I was on it, but the sins of the whole world. First John chapter 2 and verse number 2. It's impossible. If you're not a Christian this morning, it is impossible for you to live as a child of God in a father-child relationship without forgiveness of sin. Just because the Lord allows the sun to shine on you, just like he shines on everybody else. You breathe air just like everybody else breathes. You have safe passage down the interstate just like everybody else. You get groceries just like everybody else. Just because all of these things happen does not mean that you have God's favor. Brother Fraser, who are you to tell me? Who are you to tell me that I don't have God's favor? I'm not telling you that. I'm not telling you that that did not come from me. That comes from the word of God. He says, I'm the vine. You are the branches. He says, without me, you what? You can do nothing. You have to be connected. To the vine. Because if you're not connected, he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you're not connected to the vine, he says, you can do nothing. You have to be connected. You have to be connected. You can't be connected the way you want to be connected. Yeah, man, listen. Uh, I've been buying gas for my car ever since I had it because I can't get it to run without it. Are y'all with me? Now, if my car asks me, Rachel, do you want to buy gas or not? I'm going to very quickly say, no, I do not. I do not want to buy gas. I want you to run without it. Are y'all with me? Yeah, I, I, hey, if, if it's left up to me, let me just tell you where I want to go. And I sit back and let you drive. I just enjoy the ride. But I can't have it that way, can I? Anybody got a car like that? If, if you do, I want to ride with you. Yeah. Are y'all with me? That's not my choice. I can't have it that way. Well, wouldn't it be wonderful if you could go to the bank and and just tell the teller, listen, I want a million dollars in my account. Yeah, how much you got? I don't have anything. I just, just, just put, put, it, put a million in there. That's what I want. That's absurd, isn't it? That is about as absurd as it is to think that you can go to God's heaven any way you want. Are y'all with me? I am the way, Jesus said. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. We have to go his way. There is no other way. 
your realization that you are forgiven enables you to forgive. Your realization. See, what, what, what happened with the, uh, the, the, the unforgiving servant is that he did not embrace the very fact that he had been forgiven. You cannot forgive until you embrace the very fact that you have been forgiven. See, a spouse can't forgive their spouse until they embrace the fact that they've been forgiven. Are y'all with me? It doesn't matter how many times. It doesn't matter the magnitude. You remember that? You got a debt that you'll never be able to pay. But is forgiveness possible? Yes, it's possible when you understand that you've been what? You've been forgiven. Oh, I'm getting tired of you doing this. I have to tell you this over and over and over again. Till I, uh, till seven times, Jesus says, we ain't counting. We forgive. Why? Because we have been forgiven. Yeah, you've done me wrong uh, one time too many. And I'm done with you. Are y'all with me? You ever, you ever gotten mad somewhere and you say, listen, I'm never coming back. Are y'all with me? Yeah. When, when you get like that, you've got to remember, I've been forgiven. There's a song that says, I am redeemed, bought with a price. Jesus has changed my life. Anybody ask you just who I am, tell them I am redeemed. That's who I am. No, no, I, 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 I've been wrong. No, I, I'm, I, that's not who I am. I've been redeemed. I, 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 that's who I am. If anybody ask you just who I am, Tell them I am redeemed. How do I keep on forgiving? I'm redeemed. Huh? I, I'm redeemed. That's who I am. Don't ever forget who you are. Don't ever forget that the Lord has forgiven you. Because if you forget that you are forgiven when you meet somebody who wrongs you, you're not going to be able to forgive. This the, the, the second one, the second one, the, the second one. Failing to forgive gives Satan strength in your life. Failing to forgive gives Satan strength in your life. Now we've learned that to forgive is to lay aside anger. Forgive is to lay aside anger. Now, if we look at the text, we look at the text and uh, uh, Peter says, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother who sins against me? Up to seven times. And the Lord says, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Wow. What? Why am I going to go that to that length? 70 times seven. We're going to go over to Ephesians and we're going to go to chapter four and we're going to start at verse 26. Now, the Holy Spirit uh, got uh, Paul to write. He says, be angry and do not sin. It's King James Version says sin not. Now, now, keep in mind that there is a teaching here that shows us that it's possible for me to be angry and not sin. Are y'all with me? Because, don't, you know, now, nah, nah, listen, now, nah, now, nah, I got to preposition you. Because sometimes we take things literally. 
Don't let, none of us are to let our anger just go here at the church. Whether we're in the worship assembly or we're doing something else. Okay. Well, Brother Frazier said, you know, uh, Bob said, be angry and sin not. And if I'm angry, I want to let them know I'm angry. Well, you got to have some wisdom. Just stay with the lesson, okay? Don't, don't go off and, and uh, don't, don't go off on a tangent. Stay with the lesson because you're going to see something. I may not get to it, uh, but uh, uh, it's here. We're going to get it tonight. There's something for that. But be angry and sin not. He says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Now that phrase, do not let the sun go down on your wrath, means that the day has ended and you have not set it aside. Are y'all with me? Now, now watch verse number 27. He says, nor give place to the devil. Now, some of you may be reading uh, another translation, and uh, it may read, uh, give a foothold to the devil. Anybody know what a foothold is? Now, so so, so uh, uh, one thought of a foothold is, uh, if you are walking and you're not watching where you're going and your foot hit a hole and then you go to pull your foot out, but it's stuck. Are y'all with me? So you're stuck in a foothold. So you're stuck in that position. Well, if you don't start, if you don't learn to lay stuff aside, then you give the devil a place to get stuck. See, he wants to get stuck anyway. First Peter chapter five and verse number seven, eight, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil. He does what? He is stalking. He stalks you. Are y'all with me? I don't want nobody stalking me. He's been stalking you all your life. Are y'all with me? He's been stalking you. He's stalking you right now. He knows you are at church. You ever had somebody that, that's not a member of the church? Uh, they don't, then they don't go to church regularly, but they know you go. And uh, after church, they'll call you or they'll come by, whatever. And they'll say stuff like, you was at church, huh? You was at church, huh? Yeah, yeah. See? Sarcastic. You was at church, huh? Yeah, but tell you, you was at church, huh? Down at that church again. Are y'all with me? That's the devil. He's stalking you. Trying to plant some seed, trying to create some doubt. You think everybody down there going to hell? <laughs> y'all y'all sound like y'all done heard that before. Yeah. That going out of that church ain't going to help you. That church ain't changing you. Yeah, it's, it's, he tries to put a foot. If you don't learn how to set stuff aside, he will get stuck. In your mind, he will feed your anger. He will gain influence because you allow him to be there. He says, be angry, sin not, let not the sun go down on your wrath. Lay it aside. Let it go. Are y'all with me? Because if you don't let it go, then the devil is going to lock in on you and he's going to try to get you to function under his influence rather than god's influence are y'all with me so so now so now so now the question the question becomes how do how do i allow the devil 
to not have influence over my life. Because, because and, the, and the reason why I'm asking it that way is because we'll say things like, and, and listen, listen, understand something. I am not saying that I don't have an issue with the devil. No, I don't want nobody to, to get because the devil stalks me just like he stalks you. Okay, so 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 we don't. I, I don't want anyone to think that the brother Fraser don't have no problem with the devil. Okay, but I I do know that the 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 I do know that whenever we get to talking about not allowing the devil to have influence, we'll start saying stuff like, "Well, you know that devil is busy, or oh, he's busy. Oh, he's everywhere." Man, if we get to talking, it, it yeah. seems like the devil is equal with God. Yeah. He's he's everywhere. He he's he's he does things. And you don't don't go over there because he'll get you to doing. Uh, it's like you don't have no mind of your own. It's just like the devil just takes over. But I'm gonna tell you something. I believe that we can have a mind devoted to the Lord. We can have a mind devoted to the Lord. Y'all remember the Beverly Hillbillies? You know, they loaded up the truck, moved to Beverly. Now, now the, the, the interesting thing about the Beverly Hillbillies is that they were living in the mansion, but they still wore the same clothes that they wore before they got to Beverly Hills. They had money to go to the doctor, but Granny's gonna make up her concoction. They had money to buy a new car, but they're still driving that same truck. And they're just being who they are in the midst of all of these rich people. And the crazy thing about it is that the rich people thought that they were smarter than the hillbillies because of their possessions. And it comes out that the hillbillies, without the possessions, were smarter than them. That's, that's the plot of the, the, the story. Are y'all with me? But they accepted who they were in another environment. And if you can sit and watch the Beverly Hillbillies and laugh at the Beverly Hillbillies, you should be able to understand that those people went into another environment and they were comfortable with who they were. They didn't change who they were because of the environment that they were in. You mean to tell me that we can't have that same mentality when it comes down to being a Christian? I've got to walk around and I, I've got to lock myself up in the house. I can't go nowhere. I can't do anything because if I get around sinful people, I might become sinful as a split sucker. Oh, but I can enjoy the Beverly Hillbillies. We got to get rid of that kind of thinking, church. We've got to learn how to, to not give place to the devil. How do you lay aside anger? How do you lay this? I got to lay, lay it aside. Because if I don't lay it aside, then I am going to give place to the devil. That's why Jesus says, don't quit forgiving. 70 times seven. Don't, don't, don't let the times stop you. Don't let the magnitude stop you. Keep on forgiving because if you don't, you're going to give place to the devil. Brother Frazier, how can I let anger go? Because anger gets on me sometimes. Three things, and we're going to have to stop. Here you go. Here's the first one. Be honest about the reason for your anger. For what reason did the unforgiving servant have for punishing the servant? What reason? He, 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 he says, pay what you owe. What reason did he have to do that? On them one days. What was it that he didn't have no money enough? He don't owe the king nothing. 
Everything that everything that he probably made went to the king, but he don't want the king no more. He's got a clean slate so he can get a job. What reason did he have for being angry with that servant? And we've got to ask ourselves. We've got to be honest with ourselves. I'm mad with them. Why? Why are you mad with them? Be honest. So sometimes families bust up. Husbands can't get along with their wives. Wives can't get along with their husbands. Just mad. You're angry? Yeah, man. What you angry about? I don't know. You just get on my nerves. Are y'all, have, you, have you heard that? Be honest about the reason for which you're angry. Here's the second thing. Seek God's solution for the dilemma. See, the unforgiving servant was willing to submit himself to the king's service. Uh, uh, listen, I'll pay all that you, all that I owe. I'll do whatever you want me to do. See, as, as long as he knew that his life was on the line. Oh, I'm willing to do anything. You ever, you ever seen individuals act like that? But then the moment he's off the hook. Okay. I got, a, I got, I got someone that owes me. What do I do about this? And instead of him thinking back to what the king just did for him, he started functioning off of his own. He gonna pay me. Are y'all with me? So if I'm going to lay aside anger, I've got to seek God's solution for the dilemma. See, sometimes you are in a dilemma when you are angry. And what you want to do to punish a person or tell a person off, that may not be God's solution. Are y'all with me? It doesn't mean that you are passive. It doesn't mean that you're a doormat and folk walk over you. Because no one did anything to Jesus against Jesus' will. Amen. No. Every, listen, no person. Remember Jesus told, uh, Pilate says, you can have no power. Listen to him. He says, you can have no power at all against me. Unless it be given thee from above. Now you think about that statement. <laughs> what did above say? This is my beloved son. In whom I'm well pleased. Are y'all with me? So, so, so Jesus is saying, Pilate, I know you're going to crucify me, but you ain't crucified me because uh, you have power over me. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And it's, and it's an interesting thing, church. Sometimes individuals can insult you, but that doesn't mean that they have power over you. Sometimes individuals can do things against you behind your back, but that does not mean that they have power over you. Amen. Some individuals try to find out stuff about you so they can hang stuff over your head, but that doesn't mean that they have power over you. So you have to go to God for his solution for your dilemma. And then, and then, and then you've got to lay anger aside for your betterment, for your betterment. See, the unforgiving person did not allow himself to be a better person after being forgiven. He didn't allow himself to be a better person. Do you allow yourself to be a better person? You get over a dilemma. You get over a situation. You are forgiven of an offense. Do you allow yourself to be a better person? Or do you say, well, I got over that. Let me see what else I can do. Isn't that something? Yeah, have you ever looked at your children and you say, listen, I'm going to let you go. Uh, I'm going to let you go. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to get you this time. But I want you to learn from this. 
You ever, you ever, you ever said that to your children? I want you to learn from this. And, uh, and you let them go, and they get into something again. And you're just looking at it. You just don't believe nothing, do you? You ever heard folks, I'm going to make a believer out of you. Because they keep going in. I, I've heard officers say that. I mean, I've heard officers say that we had a young man. He was a member of the church. And uh, he, uh, he, uh, he grew up in the church. And uh, when he got into his 20s, early 20s, he's in and out of jail. And, uh, and boy, he had a mouth, man. He, could, he, he, could, he was a smart young man. You know, sometimes individuals use their intellect for the wrong reason. Very smart young man. He could talk. He could talk. And he understood very well. And one day, one day uh, I went into the jail and uh, he was in the cell block. And uh, he, uh, his face, his face was, uh, he was a bright skin, bright skin uh, young man, very, very bright skin. And, uh, and, uh, but his face was blue. Yeah. And so uh, I said, man, what happened? He says, uh, he says, I had to go out, is what they told me. And uh, see, in the cell block, you got cameras. And uh, on the hallway to the elevator, you got cameras. But inside that elevator, no cameras. He said, bro, Frazier. Them officers got me in that elevator. And this is what they did to me. Oh, they, 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 they put him. They put it on him. They put it on him. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Took him to the hospital, too. Yeah. Officers took him to the hospital. Got him treated. Brought him back. You know, so, and see, and see, what happens is, is uh, he used his intellect and his mouth for the wrong thing, the wrong way. And they got him in that elevator and they whooped him real bad. See? And then he gets out of jail. He stays out for a while. And guess what? He goes right back in. I said, when are you going to learn? When are you going to learn? Sometimes, church, we will spend a whole lot of time complaining. Even around here, we'll complain, we'll complain about this and about that. But the question is, am I positioning myself to be better? God has given me an opportunity to be here. He's given me health and strength, resources to be here. Am I allowing my hang-ups to keep me from being better in my life. When something is better, when something better is offered, do I push it away? And I just want to remain the way I am. That's how this servant is. He's forgiven. He's got a new life, but he wants to remain the way he was with the new life. I want to remain the way I am with a new life and I want to go on to heaven. And that's where, that's where the king got upset with him. Are y'all with me? See, that's how the parable ends. The king got upset with him because he did not try to be better. And guess what? The Lord will get upset with us too. He'll get upset with us too if we don't strive to be better. Have a better attitude. Have a better speech. Have a better ministry. We ought not to stay in the same spot year after year when we're striving to be better. Are y'all with me? Do better. And sometimes it's not that we do more, but just do it better. Do it better. Yeah, I remember Matthew and uh, 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 we, we, uh, uh, we had uh, these bicycles. These bicycles, y'all remember them bicycles with the banana seat and uh, and the guys with the banana seat bicycle, man. 
you get to ride that bicycle, man, and and uh, and and you get get your uh, you, you you get to get to riding so good that you can ride with no hands. So you just hands to the side. You just wheeling. Then you get to ride so good you can ride on one wheel. Papa willing, you just riding, and I, I you know, you, how 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 long can you ride on one wheel? Are y'all with me? You just became an expert in riding. Then how fast can you ride? And how can you turn that on that corner? Can you lean and and, and yeah, hooks like all of that? We just got better and better at riding that bicycle. Bicycle didn't change. It was just us getting better. And the songs ain't gonna change, church. I ain't gonna, I'm not saying we can't learn no new song, but we're gonna sing a cappella. Are y'all with me? We ought to get better at singing. We, we, we get better. You lay stuff aside so you can get better yourself. Yeah, your study gets better. More I study, the more I learn, the more I can apply, the more I can go to the word of God and find an answer for my question, for my spiritual pain, for my challenge in my face. I get better. Learn how to get along better. And I learned Matthew's temperament. I learned Brother Larry's temperament. I learned Brother Chris's temperament. I stay around them long enough to learn their temperament so we can work better together. Lay stuff aside for our own betterment. Our own betterment. And guess what? Uh, uh, if, if you don't want to get better, guess what? I want to get better. I want to get better in my relationship with God. And if I focus on getting better in my relationship with God, that just might encourage you to get better. But if we sit around and nobody wants to get better, we'll bite and devour one another. And that's what Jesus was saying. Hey, don't stop forgiving. Because if you stop forgiving, you're going to give place to the devil. And once you give the devil a foothold, guess what? He's going to influence. You'll never set anything aside. Just think about it. Just think about it. Stuff we've been holding on to for years. Can't set it aside. And that's something. I'm going to close on this. We have one more tonight. Y'all want me to tell you what it is? Yeah. Is it go? What what enables us? You got to come back and hear this. What what enables us to forgive is we place God's power in His proper perspective. You place God's power. Y'all gonna make me tell you? I'm gonna just tell you a little bit, okay? Is the wrong done to me more powerful than the God who made me? Sometimes we give our wrong more power than God. Are y'all with me? So, 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 so that's what's going to enable me. And I, I, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a point in there about the servant. Uh, that helps us to see that. You come back and see it. But right now, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna stop. And I want you to do an exercise with me. I want you to open your hand. Everybody can do this. You don't have to hold your hand up. I ain't asking nobody to hold your hand up or nothing like that. You got your own hand. You can be your left hand, your right hand, whatever hand you got. You know, you, you don't have to show nobody your hand. This is not, you know, anything for anybody to see. This is for you on the inside. You got your hand open. Now, I want you to think about Something that makes you angry. I know you don't want to think about it. But for instance, I come to church, I don't want to be angry, but just, just, just work with me. There's something. There's something. There's somebody, something that makes you angry. I want you to close your hand. And the more you think about that person, or that something that makes you angry, sometimes the tight of your hand will get I want you to think, I want you to ask yourself this question. Is there something that makes you angry going to get you connected to God? Remember, you got your hand. 
Every time you think about it, the hand might get tight. When you think about it, is that going to get you connected to God? That wrong? Is, is that wrong or that person more important to you than God? Is, is that wrong or that person keeping you from being all that you want to be for God? Now, you just got your hand right here. It's, 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 it's your hand. It's your thoughts. You got total control to make this hand tighter as you think about that thing, that person that makes you angry. And you have a choice to let it go. Now, I don't want to see your hand. I just want to ask you, are you able to open your hand? and let it go because if you don't let it go you're giving the devil a foothold in your life and Jesus says don't stop at seven keep on forgiving that, and, 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 and that speaks to me because if I keep forgiving I won't give the devil influence in my life. Who this morning? It's a rhetorical question. Rhetorical. Who will let it go? Who will let it go? You say, you say uh, uh, I, we don't want no report, you know, about, about who it is, what it is. We don't want to do that. We just want you to have a moment with God right now and let it go. Let it go. You don't have to tell any details. But can you let it go? And if you let it go, the Lord, you'll see it. You'll see it tonight. He'll be pleased with you. He'll be pleased with you. He'll be pleased. And he'll bless you. If you're here this morning, you're not a Christian. This is your opportunity to become a Christian. Believe Jesus died for you. He was buried. He rose again on the third day. The blood is shed. Calvary purchased the church of God, the church of Christ. Acts 20, verse 28, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Mark 16, 15 and 16. Believe the gospel. Believe it to the point that you will repent. You'll make up in your mind, I'm going to change. I cannot change until I conclude that God is right about everything. Acts 2 and verse 38, confess Jesus that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. Acts 8, 37, will baptize you for the remission of your sins. All your sins are washed away. Forgiveness of sin starts in baptism. He washes away your sins. He places you into Christ. In Christ, there is forgiveness of sin. Your connection with God will start with your being forgiven. I know that you've had experiences that helps you to see the importance of having a relationship with God. But the connection does not begin until you are forgiven. The Lord will add you to his church, Acts 2 and verse 38, Acts 2 and verse 47. He'll add you to the church of Christ. You're a Christian. And think about this servant. He was a servant of the king. He was a servant of the king and the king forgave him and he didn't change. Is it possible that we have embraced the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we have not changed today? Today, is it possible for us to say, Lord, I want to change. I want to be better than what I've been and I cannot be better without you. Will you come to Jesus by repentance, confession, and prayer? If that's anyone's desire, please come as we stand. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus singing, no, not one. Keep singing, no, not one. And none else could heal all our souls' diseases. Singing, no, not one. Keep 
singing, no, not a one. Do you know Jesus knows all about our struggles? And he will guide on till the day is done. Oh, there's not a friend like the lonely Jesus singing, no, not one keeps singing, no, not one was ere a gift like the Savior given, singing, no, not one keeps singing, no, not one, and will he refuse saints a home in heaven singing no not one keeps singing no not oh do you know jesus he knows all about our struggles and he he will guide until the day is done oh there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus singing, no, not one keeps singing, no, not one. Do you know Jesus? He knows all about our struggles, and he, he will guide until the day is done. Oh, there's not a friend. Thank you for being with us today. Please contact us for a Bible answer to a Bible question, a prayer request, a call from the minister, communion supplies, how to give electronically, and our weekly schedule. Until the next time, may God bless you and keep you is our prayer.